Today, we are continuing with that same message on power from above. And I want us to read from Philippians chapter. Let's look at Philippians. Turn to Philippians 3.10 and let somebody please read it. Philippians chapter 3 verse 10. Yes. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. Amen. I want you to say to somebody by your side, I want to know Christ. Say to him, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. Hallelujah. Like I said, within the week, we have dealt with the qualifications one must have to receive the Holy Spirit. We also dealt with other areas that has to do with what one must do with the power when it comes. And on Friday, we talked about let it come. Let what come? The power from above. Let it do what? Come. And that night, as within the week, the power of God came mightily upon his people. The power of God came as on the day of Pentecost. It came and filled the people. Chains were broken. Those in bondage were liberated. The powers of darkness were destroyed. The strongholds of our enemies, we are pulled down. Because what? The power from above came down upon his people. You see, why are we talking about, I want to know him today. The power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit himself wouldn't have come if Christ had remained in the grave. If Christ had remained in the grave, the power wouldn't have come. The power came because one, Jesus promised his people, when I go, I assure you when I go, I will plead with my Father in heaven and will send upon you the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit comes, he will teach you all things because that power is the spirit of truth. When the power of truth comes upon you, you will do greater things. As we read in John this morning, he said, look, those who believe in me, we've been talking about the unity of the church. We've been talking about the trinity, the one person in three persons. Because that is the authority of the children of God. And I said, because Jesus made a promise that he would send a power. And when he died, his words came true. Because he said, even when I die, on the third day, I must do what? I must get up. Now look at what happened on that faithful day. When it was time for Jesus to come back to life. There were soldiers that were stationed to ensure that that miracle of resurrection never came to pass. But something happened. Something significant happened. Something extraordinarily happened. And what was it? When it was the due time, it was as if the soldiers were given sleeping tablets. They all slept off. And the Lord came up from the grave. And I guess he must have said to them, Hello, gentlemen, sleep on. I am gone. Hallelujah. Hello, soldier man. I beg, make you the rest. The son of man don't work out. And they were there with their arms. Their arms could not help them. And no wonder when they went back to report, the officers in charge said to them, Look, listen, you know, this one will be the story you go go tell people, say you were asleep, you know. Oh yeah, carry money. Put for your pocket. 
when they ask you, the thing you go tell them, they say, in disciples, come carry them. Amen? And the question is, how dare a soldier be on guard? How dare a policeman be on guard? And then what you are put, what is put in your custody will be taken. And you come to tell the people, somebody came and did what? And took it away. You must, in fact, go a second prison. You will pay dearly for it. And what happened? When Jesus resurrected on the third day, he showed himself to various people. He showed himself to the children of God, who, of course, at that point, we are in confused state. Who we are confused because they never believed again whether the resurrection will come to pass. They were confused because they were afraid of the Jewish authority coming to grip them and give them their own portion of the punishment. And so they were in hard out. And when the women went and saw that Jesus was no longer there, and when they went and the spirit of the, the angel of the Lord said, why are you looking for that man that is among the living? That man that is among the living, why are you looking for him in the graveyard? Why are you looking for him? It got done on them that the promise had come to pass. Hallelujah. And what happened? After the appearances, Jesus went to heaven. And on the promise that when he said to them, be you in one place. He said, be you in one place and wait. The power will surely do what? Come. I pity for those of us in this church who run from one prayer house to another. I pity you. I pity you. Especially in a country where security is very expensive. You know, security in Nigeria now is expensive. I say to people, if you make one million, you need one security man. If you make two millions, you need two security men. And by the time you become a billionaire, you need an army barracks to protect you. Because security in Nigeria is another di has taken a different dimension. So for those of you who jump from pillar to post, I pity you so much. And what happened? On that faithful day, the power came. We were told last Sunday that the timid fishermen, when the power came upon them, they became vibrant preachers. They became fearless human beings. They were able to speak in the public. They were able to proclaim the gospel of the message. Why? Because the power had come upon them. And so is it upon you today. If you have been afraid of doing God's work, the power is upon you to do exploit in the name of Jesus. The power is upon you to do exploit in the name of Jesus. And what are those exploits you have to do? He said, when the power came, Peter stood boldly, stood boldly and proclaimed the gospel of Christ. To a point that when the spirit now came upon the people, others who were watching from afar said, these people are drunk. <laughs> these people are already what? And Peter said, look, gentlemen, how dare we be drunk at this hour? Is it not too early at 9 o'clock for whatever I've taken to begin to push me about? Is it not too early? And that again shows me that there is pity for those who go on into drinking places as early as 4 or 5 to soak themselves in what is called alcoholic drink. And watch those who do that. Watch them very closely. Their skin, after some time, will begin to look like water. Because the blood in them will be what? Dried up. I pity them. See, if you see such people, have mercy on them in Jesus' name. And what happened? Because these people had been with Jesus. And because they had taken Jesus serious at this time. Watch. Somebody was at the beautiful gate. And as the disciples were going in and he said, please, please, I need your assistance. Give me something. 
And they turned and said to him, Silver and gold have we none, but what we have we give to you. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, get up and do what? Walk. And what happened? The, the man got up and did what? And went away. Hallelujah. The blind saw. The crippled and the lame walked. The paralyzed was healed. All manner of sicknesses. All manner of disease. They were all set free. And listen again. Even when because of the power of the spoken word, the disciples were arrested and imprisoned. Something also happened. What was it? As they were in the prison yard praising Lord, Paul and Barnabas were there praising Lord. The prison did what? Peter was arrested and imprisoned. There in the prison, something happened. The angel of the Lord came unto him and said, Look, Peter. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get up, get up. This is not the place for you. Oh, yeah, follow me. Peter did what? Followed. If the Holy Spirit comes to you to follow, Papa, will you follow? You go follow him. Anywhere you stay, make it a go. You go follow him. God bless you in Jesus' name. And that is a sign that we must be obedient to God. Once you are obedient to the power of the Holy Spirit, I want to assure you this morning that your troubles are all over. Amen? I say, if you believe and trust in the power of the Holy Spirit, your troubles are all... Even when Buku Haram are moving around, they will never Buku around you. Because in an attempt of theirs to Buku around you, you will harass them. Are you hearing me? Do you know what I mean? By the time there is a, an extraordinary power in you, and the infidels comes around to take your life, the Lord will build a strong wall to protect you. The wall of Jericho fell just by shouting of the people of God. Going round it, only but seven, the wall did what? It's, it's just because of our little faith. That is why any little sign of terror will begin to shake. This morning, you are knowing Jesus and the power of his resurrection. That power that broke the grave. That power that made the soldiers to be asleep. That power that threatened the, the authority of those in power then. That power is in you. 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 Only accept it. And see your miracle coming your way. Are you ready? Are you ready? Listen. I do not know what you are passing through. Maybe enemies must have told you your own is finished. God has forgotten everything about you. Daddy, God has not forgotten you. God has not forgotten your family. All that we need to do is to say, God, I am with you. And forever I am with you. Now if you look at where we read in Proverbs this morning, he said, look, from the foundation of the world, even before the world was made, this power of God was there. You see, in the village, when you begin to tell stories, as young people, you begin to tell stories about the village, and an old man gets up. What do you do? You keep quiet. <laughs> because all you have to tell is about Yahoo, Yahoo. But when an old man gets up to talk, you say, ah, hey, Joe, shut up. Make me listen. Baba wants to say something. Because that is when he that knows the story, he that has the history in his hand, has stood up to say something. And so you keep quiet. And so that place said, even before the world was made, because God is not unaware of whatever problem you are going through. God is not unaware of it. He knows that those problems will come. They are only coming to make you stronger, not to weaken you. Say to the person by your side, the problems are made to make you stronger. They are made to make you stronger. 
Why are they made to make you stronger? When you born a piki, and that piki no get sick. It's just they happy, happy all the time. They happy, happy all the time. Any slightest attack, your heart will fly away. But if from day one, after some day, the child begins to seek small, people will tell you, ah, no, it's usual. They know they carry picking for nothing. You know. <laughs> when he gets sick, he goes strong. As if they sick, the bone go the strong. No, be so. And then you'll be, you'll be praying to God, may this child of mine survive. May this child survive. And the child will continue to grow. We continue to survive. The Lord will continue to strengthen that child. And the child will continue to grow. Hallelujah. And so God is aware that our troubles are on the way. And he made the power to be there even before the world was made. And how? So that when the troubles come our way, we will call upon that power. And that power will dissolve the troubles. The problem again Christians have is that when troubles come our way, we become complainants. Are you hearing me? I tell people, the greatest IPO, any police officer here? Any policeman here? Okay. I bet you they're here. Make them relax. The greatest IPO the enemy has for a Christian is fear. Fear. You know what an IPO is? Investigation police officer. Fear. Any little thing, he will investigate you and report you. Fear. See, this sickness that comes so, now from there you go die, oh, your own don't pay me. Oh. So, oh yeah, make you run, go to Babalawo. You pick race, go to Babalawo. No wonder. The canon residential is said, anybody that goes to a hospital without first challenging God, he would sue the person. Thank God, one of our members was elevated to the office of a judge. Amen? May we put our hands together for Almighty God. It is not a post that comes so easy. Thank God, one of us has been elevated to the rank of a judge in the state. And if that man sits upon the, his judgment throne and declares you free, are you not free? If he says you are not free, no matter the eye you I am, no matter the come come you do inside your mouth, imprisonment, I the face so. Your own don't finish. But when God says yes, no man can say what? No. And so what are we talking this morning? That when you know Christ, and the power of resurrection, the power that raised him from the dead, your troubles are all. And that was why, if you read down that passage, he said, Look, we will also know him and share in his sufferings. So that you have become a believer, you have become a child of God, does not mean it is now the bread and butter. <laughs> and that not be so. That when little trouble comes, you will say, Ah, God, where are you there now? No be from morning prayer, just the return so. God, ah, no be all night, I just the return so. Ah, God, when is there a divine encounter? And I've been go there. Why this trouble come my way? Let's say, go through it with the full assurance that you will overcome it. Because it is only when you have been able to overcome that trouble that you have a testimony to give. If you do not overcome the troubles, you have no testimony to share. You have nothing to appreciate God for. If somebody goes into the house in the night to sleep and he does not wake up the next day, will that person have a testimony? No way. And that is why a good number of us do not know that each night we sleep and wake up, God has performed a miracle in our life. Say to the person by your side, God will continue to perform my miracle. God will continue to perform my miracle. Because I am his, he will continue to perform my miracle. Now listen, what is it that you are going through? Are there insecurities around you? Threat messages here and there? People are making matter of how you are about to die. Listen, believe God. You will not do what? At least if not for any other thing. One man was told in the scripture, prepare your house. You are about to die. What did that man do? That's 
Hezekiah, what did he do? He said, God, I don't go down. Yo. If die now to threaten me, me, I don't go free die now. I still get many things to do for you. So if you kill me now, God, who is another Hezekiah? <laughs> me, I don't go agree. See, this church, St. Andrew, now me, I go help, I go do my portion to build it up. Activities in the church, I will be there. So if I die, my seat will be empty. So since I don't want to make my seat day empty, I no go. God say, ah, this kind of man. <laughs> you have this so? He said, ah, this kind of man, where I say you go die, he say you no go die. Okay, I had 15 more years. May you put your hands together for God. Because you have said you will not die. I am adding 15 more years. 15 years. Is it a joke? It's not a joke. And God strengthened him the more. And he gave the totality of his life unto God's service. Listen. If for the enemy's sake, you for don't die long ago. Are you hearing me? I mean, if you are the enemy to decide in your life, you are born for don't rotten finish in the grave. Even if the enemy had, if it had gone the way the enemy planned it for some of us, Nobody would have seen our corpse as talkless of talking about burying us. But because of the mercy of God, because of the miracle of Christ, because of the resurrection of Christ, because of the power in his spoken word, God has kept you alive till today. God has kept you alive till today. You go through some troubles, he wakes you up again. You sleep, he wakes you up again. And you, some of us, we begin to do in Yanga, to roto in Yanga. Some of you, when you see your fellow man in trouble, you say, hey, hey, I know the land. <laughs> now from here and now, you go, pay me. <laughs> Who tell you say you go, pay me? Now you get in life. <laughs> no, be the small food I give him. Now you see the sustainable. And this morning, no greet me fine. This evening, I know go give him chop again. Let me tell you, if you don't give him chop, and he sees a kernel and cracks it and eats. You will see him the next day. Amen? And so what is the Nyanga throw throw for? Because of the little gift you have in your hand. A gift that is not your own. I say a gift. My Sunday school teacher this morning taught me something. He said, look, the thing God gives you, not be your own, no. You are only better care. A man said to my father, the day I will send my children upon your family, you want to go hear me? My father came back and told me, I said, Papa, leave him. Let him send his children upon us. There is a power greater than his children. Amen? And he turned back, he said, Ah, none of your children can go beyond secondary school. But all in children today, the man know them, my papa know them. All in children, now school start and diploma. But by God's grace, we have PhD holders in my father's house. It is not by our knowledge nor by our power. It is only when you depend in the resurrection power, it will come through. My dear, you cannot do anything on your own. You cannot. Because if you are to be placed in the place, look, how many of you have ever seen where the devil is drawn with Jesus? That picture where they set and they for ground, Jesus comes there on top with a sword. How many of you don't see that? If you don't see that picture, you go no say Jesus get a kobi. I mean, set and get a kobi. Set and get waiting. You know waiting be a kobi. In chest, na lion, na tiger, na heart. <laughs> that is a kobi. Set and get the heart of a thug. But look at the innocent Jesus throwing him on the ground and trying to beat him. And of course, he was beating hands down. And so will it be when Satan comes your way, the resurrection power will destroy his, his, his powers and set you free in the name of Jesus. Those of us, when still they go for juju, the power don't spoil finish. Oh. They know they walk again. There is also one picture where they draw man of God, where they walk with in suits. They walk out with in suit and Bible in the hand. 
I seen the waka one devilish idiot come package one or come up. One charm. Place them on the road. They wait. Make the child of God go match her. As the child of God was moving, if in leg passed the charm, the devil now say, Child, wonderful. And I said, No, no one don't have for. No one don't have for. The charm still did there. I never have for. You know the meaning of have for? To throw away. When something don't lost, you say the thing don't daffo. I say you never daffo. You are trying to see they, they are pick them as you package them so. Now listen, when people go about planning evil for you, the resurrection power will set you free in the name of Jesus. Their charms will be rendered hopeless because they have no authority over this child of God. And let me tell you, that will come through when you, the child of God, will rely on Jesus and allow his power to remain firm in you. Can you do it? Child. Can we take a resolution this morning to say, come rain, come sun, I am for Christ. Can you take that resolution? Can you take that strong decision to say, come rain, come sun, I am for Christ. And Christ said, I am in my father. And my father is in me. And they who believe in me are also in me. That I and my father will be in them. And when the spirit of God is upon you, God the father, God the son, and God the Holy Spirit, there are three of them are in you. Because you have accepted him as your Lord and personal savior. And all you need to do is to live your life to say, God, I surrender. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender. Oh, I surrender. to surrender this morning because you have known this great man called Jesus and because you are now convinced that his death has brought a lot of things done to you including your great salvation what are the things you must surrender you must surrender your sin you must surrender fear you must send the IPO what packing when an IPO comes to search your house and he finds nothing are you not already free let that great IPO come into your life and see nothing to charge against you. Are you hearing me? When the devil comes, may he not see anything to hold on in your life. May he not see anything to hold on in your life. So that when he comes, in, an, in a disguised form to search you, the fire of the Holy Ghost that is deposited upon you will radiate. The glory of the Lord will overshadow him and he will bow and tremble because you are made in the image of God. Are you ready to surrender? Are you ready to surrender your sins? Surrender the pride in you? Surrender all that has made you sinful? Surrender all that gives you hope that you think on your own you can make it and now completely be depending on God? Can you do it? Can you do it? Philip said, show us the Father and it shall be enough. Listen, Jesus said, knowing the Father alone is not a... You must go beyond knowing the Father. Are you ready to go beyond knowing Him? The going beyond knowing Him is utilization of the power of God in your life. You must be willing to use that power. I am not talking to people that when we get out of the gate now, simple things will begin to quarrel. Because with the same mouth you curse human beings, you say Holy Ghost fire. The same mouth, you don't call somebody idiot, fool. I know you see your mama, see your papa. And any little, when rain comes, there's a little thunder. Brrr, you say, <laughs> Why not say to thunder, idiot, fool? Look at your head, who could die? 
Any, you don't pour courses upon somebody. And any little thunder. You are looking for under the bed to hide yourself. May God deliver us in the name of Jesus. May God deliver you in the name of Jesus. May he deliver you in the name of Jesus. From all the troubles of your life. May God deliver us. And when that power comes. As it has come upon us. We will do greater exploits. And not only with members of St. Andrew know, the entire neighborhood of wherever you go, we know that a child of God is there. Are you ready? I surrender. I surrender. May we stand up? I surrender. I surrender. by this message. For more information, visit our website www.egoeyeopener.com. God bless you.